So last week, I had a discussion about mirror and concave mirror. And someone told me that they could not, in their mind, understand how come. If you take a spoon and you look in a spoon in the concave area, that you can actually see yourself upside down. If you look at, look at yourself on the, on the back, you see yourself standing up. But if you go inside, you see yourself upside down. And if the person could not figure out, even though I showed how the, light of, the rays of light are working, how it worked. By the way, if you want to see that video from last week, I'm, it's in on the channel. Otherwise, I'm going to put it at the end as a link so you can watch it if you wish. But here I'm, I will explain with rays specifically how come you can yourself, see yourself on a spoon upside down. So first of all, let's look at our mirror. So here we have a principal axis, axis, and we have the concave mirror. The curvature of a mirror, it is a point C right here, you think uh, of a bicycle wheel. And you have the spoke of a bicycle wheel. So the center of curvature dictates how curved your mirror is. In the middle right here, you have a focal point where all the rays, so if you have here uh, parallel rays, they will focus on one point right there. Okay, so the question that the person had was the following. So let's see if I can get some good colors. So if, so if we have an eye that is like this, looking towards the spoon, and our spoon is like this, so we have the back of the spoon, and we put the spoon right here. What is going on so that we see ourselves upside down? So the first thing we need to keep in mind is that you are a human. You're looking at yourself in the spoon. So let's see if I can make a little human right here with a smile, a couple hands, and then I'm gonna put here a couple feet like this. Perfect. Not the best drawing, and that's why I'm not doing art. I'm doing science. So if you're looking in yourself, your body is standing up with your head up because we know we're standing on the ground. Let's see what happens if you are doing light rays. So from the video we did last week, let's see if we can do a rays of light to understand where this object right here will create an image that is upside down. So here I'm going to take a point here at the top of the head of this uh, this human right here. You could this, you could say this is you. When we have a ray of light that is parallel to the principal axis, this will be reflected going through the focal point. In the same way, so if we have a, a ray of light parallel to the principal axis, it will be reflected through the focal point. The same way, if you have a, a light ray, a ray of light going through the focal point, it will be reflected parallel to the principal axis. So that means that we can do another ray as well. So if I have here a ray going through the focal point right here, it will be reflected perpendicular, uh, parallel to the principal axis. So that is a good thing to keep in mind. Now, what's interesting is that you have two rays of light. Let's get a good color that is contrasting. I have here the top of the head, the intersection of two rays of light. This one and this one. But what's interesting is that once they reflect, they also meet right here. So here we have the intersection of two rays of light. And here we also have the intersection of two rays of light. But what's interesting is that if you think of this part and this part that is on the principal axis, and this point that is right here, that is the similar to the, to the point that is at the bottom, now I can actually do my image and see where it is. We have an image that would be like this. And then we have this, uh, like this. Perfect. So because of proportion, we have here my head, we have here the smile, 
we have our body. And the two points we have here are the two points that we have there along the principal axis. So this is the first piece of information we have. Now we need to figure out if we can set our legs as well. So basically, we can do new rays of light to do this one. So if I take this away, and I take this, uh, okay. So I'm going to leave this intersection here and this intersection here, and I'm going to use two other light, the colors for the rays of light. So what happens if I go from this point right here? Oh, this is too similar. Let's say I'm going to use blue. If I have this ray here that is going this way, parallel to the principal axis, it will be reflected going through the focal point this way. So this is our first ray of light, like this. Let's take another color. Let's take red this time. If I have a ray going through this point and through the focal point, oops, this is not working. That's exciting. Give it another one. If we have, there you go, this ray going through the focal point and being reflected. This way, we realize that we have a point of intersection here and a point of intersection there, which is the tip of our leg here. So let's see, what do we have? We have here our legs, this, that means that our other leg is right there. So let's double check now. If I take away all these rays, because it looks busy, So I have here intersection of two rays of light, and here's the intersection. We have here two rays of light, intersection here, intersection here. So that means that I now have my image. If we have my object here, I have my image there. So what do we see as an image? So if you think of your spoon again, you take your spoon here. If you have your eyes in line, with the, the principal axis in the middle here of your spoon, and you look, knowing that yourself, you're standing in front of your spoon, what do you see? You see your body, but you see the image of that body, and guess what? It is now upside down. And if you were to look at some characteristic, you could see that the height, the height of the object here, of the original person, is greater than the height of the image. So the image is a bit smaller. And if you look in the spoon, you can actually see that you are smaller here. There's also the distance of the object. So from this point here to the object, I have a distance, but the distance of the image is smaller. So the distance of the object is greater than the distance of the image. So that's a good thing. And the next thing we can say is that it is an inverted image. Perfect. So here it gives us a chance to say, okay, we explained with rays of light how we can actually see ourselves upside down. And here I put, so after, last week I had something above the line that gave us an image below the line. But if you have an object that is partially above the principal axis and partially below, the principal axis, you have an image that will be partially below and partially above. And I forgot to do the little arms here. There we go. And this is exactly what's happening on how using the concave mirror, you can actually see yourself upside down when you look at yourself on the spoon. So you got, if you sometimes you don't know what to do, take a spoon, have a look upside down, and then you'll see that it's all about rays of light. So this was a great question from, from the audience, and I'm very happy I was able to answer this one. So very good, and that will be our second video for today. Oops, I'm going to conclude 
If you have enjoyed this explanation for the image upside down, I'm going to put here a link to the video I did last week that explained how rays of light behave the way they do. That will give you a chance to say, okay, I better understand and you'll be able to see the application with the theory from last week. So I'm going to put here a link to the video and I'll see you there in a moment.